Okay, so here we have the Bell Full 9 um, in its bag. Um, just a quick overview here uh, of some of the features uh, of the Bell Full 9 full face uh, downhill uh, or BMX helmet. Um, so yeah, first things first, um, as you can see, the helmet comes shipped in a really nice solid bag. Um, definitely worthy of note, I think. Um, I hope the lighting is okay in this video, by the way. A um, little bit of a dull day here uh, in the UK. Um, so, nice uh, durable ballistic nylon uh, style carrier, uh, rucksack material. Uh, very lightly padded, uh, no pockets on the outside or inside, um, which might damage the helmet. But it would have been quite nice to have a little, little mesh addition, put your goggles in, uh, whatever. Uh, red tab at the bottom next to the zip, single zipper. Uh, this is kind of what you find when you open the helmet in the box. Now, this isn't a true unboxing. Uh, I have ridden this helmet once before. Um, so I, just a little first impression really. Um, there is a lightweight polythene uh, carrier which envelops the helmet in the box. Uh, a little bit tricky one-handed here. So let's get that out of the way. So there is the helmet. This is the medium shell uh, matte black carbon fiber uh, full nine. Um, so also available is the transfer nine, which is about 200 pounds, about half price uh, approximately. That has the carbon uh, composite shell, uh, the fiberglass shell. This is the carbon fiber weave, uh, which you can see here. So couple of quick facts, a lot of this information of course is online, uh, but I didn't find too many videos that gave reasonable good close-up views of the helmet um, from a rider's perspective, um, so I hope this helps some of you in your buying decision. Um, first impressions are excellent, the helmet is nice and light out of the box, um, but really really solid, all the finishing. Uh, all the areas around the brow and the eye pore are absolutely solid. There's nothing uh, wiggling or moving around there. A um, couple of immediate features. Um, plenty of uh, venting, of course. I think there's a total of 13 uh, mesh-covered vents. Uh, the mouth port um, vent actually has quite a generous uh, sort of filter on the inside, so really stop a lot of... Uh, a lot of dust and bugs uh, finding their way through that, um, backed up by the aluminium mesh. So uh, I've heard some people say that um, the mouth port is really close to the chin. Um, I haven't found that at all. It doesn't impact on, on breathing in any way. Um, so I wouldn't take that with too much um, uh, authority online. Uh, I've read that a few times uh, with the reviews. Um, one of the uh, nice features, of course, the very top of the helmet, is the GoPro uh, or contour camera mount. Uh, I'm using a GoPro, um, in fact, to film this, so hence it's why it's not in position. The mount itself takes up a, a top vent, so if you're not using it, you can quickly detach this component and uh, you retain use of uh, a top vent. Um, I have filmed with the camera uh, on, the, on the top. Some of the uh, footage um, gets a little bit noisy uh, with all cameras mounted on top of helmets you got a lot of wind noise to contend with uh, but it is very stable there is no really noticeable any shake uh, going on there at all uh, obviously the rougher the track uh, you're always going to get a little bit of movement but uh, it is very solid um, these red parts are actually uh, foam sort of a, a rubber com compound uh, so there's really no lateral movement there uh, it is a breakaway mount, uh, of course, which is, is one of the main selling points. So if you do clip a tree um, or indeed come off the bike, uh, your camera might take a bit of a damage, but uh, most importantly, the helmet, uh, helmet won't. So um, the visor, uh, this is what they call the flying bridge design. Um, you can kind of see from the rear of the helmet, there is no central support for this visor at all. It is just held by the uh, plastic breakaway screws. Um, I think the um, bigger brother of this helmet, the Moto9, um, the motocross helmet has, I think, titanium hardware, um, the matte black plastic, just as lightweight, just as strong uh, in some senses. I guess the titanium would have looked better. Um, not, a, not a deal breaker. Um, so some of the basic features, um, 
the overbrow ventilation really really good with goggles on uh, directs all of that um, airflow up and over the top uh, crown of the helmet uh, I found in practice that works really well although we haven't really had uh, glorious desert conditions here in the UK uh, of late so I can't vouch for its uh, hot weather capability but uh, the lightweight and ventilation has worked really well for me so far uh, on the, the short runs I've been doing. So coming down to the bottom of the helmet, uh, you can see immediately the, the depth of that padding, um, the two uh, cheek pads left and right. Um, now these are actually secured by magnets, uh, which allows the, the pads to be removed. Um, as you can see, a little pull tab there, uh, and the helmet pads will actually uh, just pop out, uh, so no, uh, no Velcro uh, to contend with. The design of that, um, or the intention, uh, is to be able to remove the pad and then slide the helmet gently off the top of the head uh, in event of a crash, uh, which of course is something that you hope you never have to use, but uh, it's nice uh, there nonetheless. Nice padded chin strap uh, that can be removed for washing as well, which is a really nice feature. Uh, double D-ring closure, uh, pretty standard across a lot of top-end helmets. Um, little pop stud there for the trailing end of the, the helmet, keeps everything nice and tucked away, uh, the helmet strap. Uh, while the pad's removed, you can just about see in here the checkered cover. This is just a rubber flap. Uh, inside there is a foam insert, but that is designed for the soundtracks uh, speaker system, um, which they advertise is compatible with this helmet. Uh, I believe uh, Skull Candy uh, do a similar system, uh, which works, and you route the cabling out through the back of the helmet, uh, the overbrow um, sort of neck port thing here, um, and you can listen to music if that's what you uh, want to do, uh, which is, is all good. Uh, the helmet profile is really quite broad. Uh, it kind of surprised me when I took the helmet out of the box. Um, I had tried the large size on of this helmet um, and I would encourage anyone to try uh, the helmets on before they buy. Um, it is vital obviously you get correct fitting of any helmet. Um, Bell are known for their comfort, really really super um, super comfort, very nice uh, feel on the head, really nicely balanced uh, very deep profile. Uh, it re you really feel it around all parts of your uh, of your skull. It's, it's extremely comfortable um, and really well balanced as well. There's no forward or aft um, wobbling going on um, when it's uh, done up correctly. Uh, really, really nice feature. Um, I'm coming from a, a Troy Lee D2 helmet, which um, is known for its comfort also, but this really is in a very different league, um, in my humble opinion. So, one little interesting thing to note, um, this is being filmed mid-2015 uh, and the manufacturer sticker there indicates uh, July 2013. Um, so this, um, this little guy popped out of the factory uh, two years ago. Um, not quite sure why there's such a lead time on that, um, but however the helmet is brand new, so no complaints from me. Um, coming around to one of the stickers that probably spotted at the bottom there. I can show you this right at the bottom of the helmet beneath the padding is the eject system. Now this is a inflatable bladder. Uh, it does not come installed on the helmet when you buy it. Um, it sits underneath the crown of the helmet just underneath that F9 emblem. Uh, there's a little uh, square pocket there uh, about the size of a matchbox and uh, that enables an inflatable bladder, excuse me, to be installed in there and inflated in the event of an accident. So when the pads are removed, the helmet can be inflated and uh, it will rise off the, the top of the head. Um, obviously that is only to be carried out by an ambulance technician or paramedic in the event of an accident. Um, the system, I had a quick look, it retails, I think, at time of filming uh, for around about £140. Uh, as an optional extra for this helmet. Um, so quite a pricey upgrade, but one that, that may indeed uh, save you from really severe injury um, if the worst happens. So the helmet weight um, is around about uh, 1,050 grams, I beg your pardon, 1050. Um, 
I notice the balance of the weight rather than a dramatic weight change uh, between the D2, uh, which is a composite helmet in my case. Um, it is a really solid, um, solid helmet. So I'm not really worried about it being super lightweight. Uh, I'd rather the protection was there um, first and foremost. So that's a, a little brief overview. Um, I hope the waffling hasn't put you off too much. Um, of the Bell Full 9 helmet um, 2015 model. So yeah, um, hope you enjoy that video. Um, hope it helps you make some decisions. Um, I can thoroughly recommend this helmet. It is extremely comfortable uh, and I really look forward to putting in many, many more miles. Uh, thanks for watching.